Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a rather popular reel. This one's a left-handed drive reel. It's uh, pretty frozen up. This is a, uh, a Maxell Hybrid 20L. And, uh, well, it's just in for service. I got two of these, and both of these are not working very well. I'm going to guess it's been a long time since it's been serviced. And it just, it just turns slow. The release is sticky. It does release. The other one seems to be completely frozen. And uh, I tried to, to just test a couple of things here for the tools I will need. And I uh, found out that all of these screws are pretty much locked in place. So we had to do a uh, penetrating oil bath on all of those screw heads before we even started. And uh, well, now we can show it to you without uh, taking 15 minutes to, uh, to kind of free those screws up. I just let the uh, penetrating oil do the work. I went and took a little bit of a break, and now we're back. There's a, uh, a center clip on the handle. This is a star adjuster reel, and uh, we're going to remove all those pieces and parts just so that uh, you can see how the reel is made and how it's serviced. And, uh, well, if you like uh, to see these kinds of things, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button to... Uh, subscribe that way you'll see all the reels that I post and uh, you can make a decision as to whether that's one that you want to watch well it probably got hosed off on the face but you can't hide what's going on in this reel uh, by just kind of doing a superficial cleaning there's an awful lot of salt and sand under that cap and that probably tells what's going on in the reel itself this is a 10 millimeter handle screw so we're going to take that out and uh, just a couple of uh, hints and best practices, if you will. One of them is to know what you're going to do with your pieces and parts before you start taking things off. Well, I use a parts tray. I, I don't get real fancy with them. I just use a fast food container. And uh, I have a mass chaos kind of organization theme that I follow. Uh, but you want to, you may be more particular, you may want to lay them out in the order that uh, you remove them and so on. Here's another example of what we were talking about here in this gear sleeve. There's all kinds of sand and the like under the screw, so go figure that one out. All right, we've uh, removed the handle that'll go in here. And another best practices tip is to take pictures along the way, particularly if you're not familiar with the reel. Those will give you kind of landmarks that you can look for when it's time to reinstall. For example, we have a little shim washer here that goes between the handle and the star adjuster. And this will help you to know where those pieces are when you're going to reinstall it. If you look in your parts tray and you see one and you don't remember quite where it was, well, that'll give you a good clue. This is a left-hand drive reel, so your star adjuster is going to come off in a clockwise manner to those of you that don't understand clockwise, that means turn it away from you. Like that. All right. Good place for another picture. We've got that off. We've got some, what I'm going to guess is probably the original lubrication in here, kind of sitting under there. And when you do this, probably you'll knock off that shim washer. So that goes on the top of the stack underneath your star adjuster. You want to clean. Um, so much of reel service is nothing more than really just cleaning the reel, inspecting the parts, replacing any broken parts, getting rid of the old lubrication and putting new lubrication in its place. Uh, we can see how, how dirty these little uh, tension washers are. These control the tension on the star adjuster. You'll find these in most reels. They're not flat washers. They are uh, Got a bend to them, don't attempt to straighten them out. That's not what you want to do with these. There was four of them, and then we have the click ratchet or click tongue. This has got a little metal bottom on it, and they're always hard to get off. They kind of press in, and when they press in, they become uh, all kind of jointed to them. Just trying to find the small pliers to help me with the leverage. And notice that there's a cavity here. That's where those little tension washers came out of. And, uh, well, it faces up when you go to reinstall. And again, we have one flat washer on the bottom of it before you get to the bearing assembly. 
There's three case screws. Those are Torx screws. I found out by trial and error that it is a Torx number eight that you're going to use. And I have a little set of these. They're Pittsburgh. That's um, the brand for Harbor Freight. Comes with a multi-bit bit set. It's invaluable. I also have a set of um, the, the actual drive, like, like a screwdriver setup for Torx. They're in six sizes, but quite honestly, when I went to try and turn these, there was a lot of flex in that shaft, and I didn't want to ruin the tool. So my answer was pretty simple. Just go to the one where I have a little bit more uh, grip on it and a little bit uh, less travel in order to worry about the bow. I just took the three screws out. Those three screws are the same size. So when it comes to the side plates uh, reinstallation, they can go in either of those poles. And with that out, we should be able to remove the case. Uh, we can see why this reel is performing poorly. There's just a ton of dirt and grease and grime in here. It's no wonder that your slide bar is performing poorly. It's no wonder that the reel is turning slowly. But we'll go fix that. Before you do much, get rid of these. Well, don't get rid of these, but take these two pinion springs off. That yoke spring or fly. And it's in it. You can be innocent enough. You can just turn it over to say, what was the... Just like that, things fall out, right? What was the brand name or something? The next thing you know, they've fallen out. And when they fall out, well, you've lost your reference points. Good thing I've been taking pictures along the way. All right, let's uh, see if we can't soak this side plate. And as I mentioned, you know, you can, you can pretty up the outside of it. But uh, if uh, you haven't been taking care of the inside of it, well, the reel's not going to take care of you. Kind of the same uh, look here. This is the stack going up. That's what's fallen out for the most part. We'll just set that aside for a moment. When you uh, when you work on these AR clutches, you want to note that there's two sides of an AR clutch most of the time. They're, they're pretty much using standard AR clutches these days. But one of them has got a metal side and the other's got a plastic side. And if you're working on a reel that's designed to be used for the left hand in this case, the plastic uh, is going to be in the up position and the metal is going to face the main gear. That's opposite the way that most of these work because it's a reverse clutch. So the clutch is the same. The clutch is going to operate the same way but the uh, because you're using the uh, left side crank rather than the right side crank it is going to be a little bit different. Alright, we're going to just take these Stack those off to the side for a moment. Let's see if we can't get the main gear off now. We can, thank goodness. Underneath that we have a backup dog here that should just be able to pull off. And we have that last part which is the trip ratchet and the uh, other drag washer. We're going to set those to the side for a moment. I keep a paper towel on my, my desk most of the time. And I like to do that because when I clean off this, this the dirt and debris. I want this stuff to be on the towel, not on my table, where the next reel in and get some transfer dirt and the like and, and mess with that. We notice that there's two sides to this. There's a flat side, flat finish side mat, and a more shiny side. The shiny side was facing up on this. If you were kind of curious, you actually see the imprint of that drag washer there. This one. Okay. I'm just going to leave that off to the side for a moment because we want to do the house cleaning. And that involves the pinion gear and yoke. And I can see why that was having trouble because it was hard for me just to pull that off the post. We're going to give that a good spray here and let that sit. We should be able to remove this. When we remove this collar, you want to note that there is a ramp side to this. Right here, there's a downside. It's not uh, not a symmetrical piece. And then there's the ramp on this side, on this the corresponding side. That's going to face inward. And when you do your look-see on that pinion gear, you're going to notice that there's two sides to the pinion gear. 
One has got a slot in it that's going to accept the spool, so that'll face inward, and this will face outward. Well, the good thing I got a new can of penetrating oil because we're going to be using it on this project. That's been sitting a little bit now. Let's go back in and do a kind of a cleaning and a scrub here. And there's no reason why a reel should have that kind of dirt in it. So again, even though you may do superficial cleaning on the outside, it's all about what's on the inside. And in this case, there's way too much of everything on the inside. So when we do a, a kind of a notion of why do fishing reels fail, well, a lot of the time it's lack of lubrication. Dirt and grease that are dried. And in this case, I think we got a little bit of everything here. But I will guarantee you in the end, this reel should fly. It'll be a, a nice example of a well-made reel. And I think for the most part, the good news here is I believe this is an aluminum case, so we don't have to deal with the corrosion. And uh, well, when we clean it all up, it'll shine. Just like the outside, the exterior that the owner probably buffed up before he sent it to me. And uh, I guess this is a good time to tell you, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them into the comment section. I'll try and answer it. It doesn't have to be on this reel. It could be on any reel. But uh, a good time also to mention, if you're looking at purchasing a used reel, you got to go through everything. Don't just uh, say, oh, it looks nice, and go grab the reel. Test it. And as you see, if we had tested this one, you had very sluggish performance in this reel. And that can only lead to issues. All right, well, we're cleaning out the tray there. We have a bearing underneath. I didn't notice any bearing issues when I was playing around with this. So we'll just uh, put some oil on that and leave that one alone. We can set that off to the side after we dry the case. I do use a glove on my hand. That's to keep the oils and debris off of my hands. And uh, every now and then that thing does its job so well that it has all the debris and that on the glove and I tend to transfer it to other pieces. Just clean it all off. Let's come over. We'll clean this pinion gear while we're at it. I'm going to use a hard brush to pull through those teeth. Get the old grease out of it. These are dollar store brushes. I think this one might be a Home Depot one or something. A lot of the tools that you use don't need to be fancy. All you need to do is uh, have a variety there where you can get into cooks, nooks and crannies and the like. I use try to use the least abrasive pieces when I'm uh, cleaning. It usually involves things like cotton swabs and uh, paper towels and the like. Every now and then you're going to need an assist, something a little bit stronger. In that case, I'll, I'll probably move up to a kitchen scrubby. And if it's really bad, if there's greening and corrosion and the like on there that's affected the metal parts. I uh, sometimes will move over to steel wall, 4.0 steel wall, that's the finest of them, it's a polishing steel wall. But uh, sometimes you need to get a little bit more aggressive to clean this stuff off. Right, that's pretty much cleaned off there. Remember what I said, find your ramps, that's the back side, and the pinion gear will sit like that. Put that in my parts tray. Let's go do the service on the main gear while we're doing gears. I want to do the same thing here. Got the dirt on the back. And you'll see I'll start with a paper towel. If I can wipe it off, I'm not going to go any more aggressive. We got the drag stack out. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to get that hard brush. We'll pull through. And you can see how it pulls the dirt out onto the, the paper towel. And again, just for illustration, I'm not seeing it, but if you see that there's dirt or old grease or something that's affecting the teeth, that's maybe jammed in there or so on, um, then you want to certainly take care of that. That little piece there came from another project. For those of you that are going to ask where did that little piece come from. I had a burring that broke in one of the wheels that I was just working on, and that is the inside sleeve for that bearing. There's a big casting wheel. So when you see a, um, 
a uh, bearing there that uh, is shielded. That's the shield that came out of that one. Okay, all right, that's clean. These are hard washers. They're carbon techs, I believe. You don't need to do anything with them. If you did want to do something with them, what you would do is you would uh, use some real grease. I just generally will wipe them down, make sure everything's clean. But if you wanted to, you could use a real grease to wipe it off. Don't let it, uh, don't let it sit there. Don't glob it on. It won't have any effect at all. Now let's turn our attention over here. Same thing again. A little bit more cleaning. Just want to get all the, the dirt off of there. We're going to oil and we're going to check all of this. If, if need be, we'll take some of these pieces apart. I'm thinking we can pretty much do the cleaning without having to do that. But again, if, you, if we notice that something isn't turning right, something isn't tripping right, after we've done all of this, then we will come in and we'll remove some of the other pieces. We want to make sure that we bring this down to the trip mode. That trip nice and easy now. Clean underneath there. Again, I'm going to use a micro screwdriver for a little bit of this dirt and debris. And I think one final flush with uh, the penetrating oil will pretty much take care of the rest of this. I'm not noticing anything unusual with this. So let's just hit that. We'll put that to the side again. Let's come over and do that, uh, that drag assembly. So we have the, the main gear. And these alternate. So what we're going to do is lay these out. It's got a lot of max drag to it. We have two eared washers. We have three keyed washers and that tells you the order that these are going to go. These are the eared washers. They have four prongs to them and a big open center to them. The keyed washers have a smaller center. That's going to grab the gear sleeve and uh, the, the, again these are carbon text washers. I'm going to leave them dry. They're clean. So we're going to start with a keyed washer and I think what I'll do is I'll, I'm just going to thinking ahead here. I think it's going to be easier if I, if I just finish that one little bit of cleaning here and put this onto the gear post. And the reason for that is it will make it a whole lot easier to align them rather than trying to fight them after you've completed a stack inside the, the main gear. Okay, so let's just get that off to the side. We're clean. That's good. I'm going to take some fishing wheel oil and just get it in all the seams on all the pivot points. I don't like the uh, penetrating oil as a lubricant. I only like it as a cleaner. There's a square on this that's going to fit over your gear sleeve and the, the uh, square below. This is an old style uh, forked dog, so make sure that it uh, um, grabs your, your wheel. Again, this is going to be a lefty, so you'll be, well, the case is going to hold that in. You're going to be reeling, it'll be doing fine. When you go to, to backstop it, it will pull back on you. Okay, got that. I guess we have our, our piece down here. So we'll trip that up. got that down, we have our dog set, we have the small washer that goes next, and we can set the main gear, I'll take that out for illustration purposes. Since I'm going to set the main gear now, I want to use uh, fishing reel grease. Apply a generous dose to it, you don't need to get it in every tooth. Too much of it is just going to throw off into other pieces and eventually it will probably wind up like this reel where it had all that dirt and dried stuff off to the side. Let's go set that over the gear sleeve now. Now we start. We have a washer 
and the first of the keyed washers goes next. A washer, and then the first of your eared washers. These have tabs, and the tabs are kind of facing downward. So we'll do that way. Place it in downward mode. And they need to fit in the slots in the main gear. Just like that. Another drag washer. Second of the keyed washers. So again, a little reel with a lot of drag. And that's uh, Max drag is determined by the area, surface area of the drag washers. So that's why I can say you get a lot of drag. Last one of these. The top one is different from the others. It's a little bit thicker and it has these two indents for that gear sleeve. That's also going to be your uh, sleeve for your anti-reverse. Let's go ahead and put that on. And I'm afraid maybe, just maybe, I won't be able to put this on pinning gear in because I probably got ahead of myself. Sometimes you can, you can load the pinion gear without uh, removing that main gear. Sometimes that pinion gear has got to go in first. Get grease on all of the teeth and on the sleeve where that uh, yoke is going to ride. Make sure you have the yoke set properly. Then bring that around, load that in. And I guess I got lucky. I need a little leverage here to trip that back. down and into the contact with the spool. Okay, now that we know the orientation, let's go ahead and put that back into the case. There's notches that it needs to fit in. I prefer to do it this way than try to put it onto the collar and then try to, to wiggle your case around to, to get the collar right. This post goes into the hole here in the pinion gear. Everything else slides over, and then we should be able to close this case up. That's a nice, firm uh, click going there, which is what we want. We know that there's three uh, screws and that they can go into either place on the reel, so I'm just going to start with the middle one. Yep, wrong tool. There we go. Okay, once we've closed that case up, we want to reinstall the uh, shim washers and the like. And I've already put the first burring washer on there. Then we have these cupped washers. They're tension washers. Don't try to straighten them out. They don't belong straightened. And uh, two go below. And I like to, to alternate the way that the cup faces. Then we got this click maker here. It's always difficult for me to get on. I was afraid I'm going to rip my fingers off with them because of the metal. Just be patient, you'll get it on there. I need a little assist here from the pliers. There we go. And then we have two more cup washers. The first one I'm going to face up, the second one I'll face down. And then we have the flat washer before we put the star adjuster on. And if my hands are in the way on this I will apologize. And the flat washer goes on. And now we can put the star adjuster on. Remember this is a left hand reel so this one's going to come on in a counterclockwise manner. Make sure it turns free and easy as you're reinstalling. When you get to the point where that noise maker uh, is going to go into the case, push it in and you'll be okay. And then you may need an assist here. Hold the inside of that um, gear sleeve. And turn it until you can use your handle as a wrench. You have 
have the handle as a wrench, tighten it down. And you'll hear it's tightening because you'll hear the noise maker. Okay, that goes, but don't put your handle on. There's one more piece that goes in there. That's the handle washer. Now you can put the handle on. And the handle screw. And that's a 10 millimeter thread on this. Make sure that your thread goes in nice and easy. If you can't turn it by hand, you're probably cross threading. If you're cross threading, you're going to damage the inside piece of that gear sleeve and need a new one. So take your time, make sure that you tighten it. By hand first to make sure it's threading properly. Okay, we have the cap that goes next. And if you point the point of the uh, screw to that hole, generally that will line up. And we have that little tie down screw that goes into the, the hole. And I'll tell you, this one was quite an issue coming out. Hopefully, we don't have an issue going back in. I'm just going to put a drop of oil on that just to see if I can't facilitate that going back in. But it's all the same issue here uh, with these. It was just a lot of bad dirt, grease and debris. There we go. Tie down is in. Okay, I'm going to shut the camera off for a second take a break. This is a pretty long one. And uh, then we'll come back we'll open up the other side. Okay, I'm back from break and I just realized I can't service the spool side from this, that it's a solid case. I'm going to need to take the case off and uh, there's three screws kind of opposite these. There's sort of in here that's holding an inner plate on for the bridge that's going to need to be removed in order to get to the, uh, the spool. And unfortunately, I don't have the time. Uh, to do that on video right now. So we're just going to conclude this by calling this a gear side service. And uh, again, if you're uh, interested in getting to the spool, uh, there's three Phillips head screws approximate to those locations. You're going to pull this drag plate off. You'll take the spool next and then uh, you can complete your service of the reel. I'll do that, but I unfortunately I won't be able to do that on video. Well, so we'll conclude that, that this is a gear side service and cleaning. To our first responders and essential personnel, fire, police, rescue, and everybody who's in public safety, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. And to everyone, keep your reels tuned up. Don't let them get to this point where they're so dirty that uh, they're going to impact the performance. Clean them up about once a year keep them serviced and uh, well they'll be ready to go when the fish bite is on. I wish all of you a great time on the water and, and happy fishing. Remember to take a friend and if you can teach a child how to fish. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.